I'm here in Houston, Texas. Welcome to another edition of Data Center Pulse on the Road. So I'm here with Wade Vincent, and he's AKA the Podfather. <laughs> he's a guy that's been putting together modular solutions for HP for how many long now? Yeah. 15 years. Got it, okay, and so your title is what? I am a power and cooling strategist. Strategist, so oh, he's a strategist, okay then. So I'm a consumer, and I'm interested in exactly how this stuff goes back together. Tell me really quickly uh, the process you've gone through. What you started from, what year, and what you've done to now. Well, the whole industry was talking about containers and people were buying shipping containers and putting servers in them starting in 2007. Yep. And of course, you know, many customers wanted that, so we started that way. We quickly realized that the value prop wasn't in the container, it was in being able to take the factory, pre-configure everything, get it to a customer, yep. and the form factor really didn't matter as much. So what we've evolved to is a, is a purpose-built shell yep. that actually allows me to fit the most number of servers uh, highest density, highest levels of availability from uh, up to a tier four data center level, okay. and do it at the lowest capex and fastest time to market for customers to deploy. And you missed two. So flexibility, right, and efficiency. Because you're going to try to get as efficient as possible in this box, right? Yeah, and that's the other thing about pods in general is that because we can use uh, warmer water yep. and the fan system is so closely coupled yep. and we can optimize the fan design to work with the server, in the pod we're looking at PUEs that of as low as 1.05 and then you can use a chiller plant Depending that on. is low as, as, yeah. one, as 0.2 adder, so okay. 1.25. So this is, this is generation what? Uh, this is generation three. Generation three, yes. okay. All right, so why don't we just go quickly sure. walk through one of these. So, this is not full. We've got how many, two racks fully uh, loaded up there? Two racks, got 20 more to go. It takes about, uh, it, it takes about uh, two days to fully populate this. Okay. Of course, all the racks were already built up, pre-power cable, pre-tested, the servers yeah. were. That was all done outside. Yeah. Then we bring them in here, fill them up end to end, then move them over the, to the test configuration bay where we, run, where we can run all 2,000 nodes and actually start to do performance characterization for the customer. Got it, okay, so this has been your baby for a while, right? So you've engineered these steps, you've really come up with how do I tune these pieces together, right? Yeah, the, 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 the big thing about for pods for us is it's the end-to-end -end converged infrastructure. Yeah. Literally, it's from the server to the fans overhead, including the UPS, yeah. to the chiller, even up to the 4,000 amp input feed. So why isn't all this starting to be optimized for customers in one or two, three megawatt feeds? Right, right, okay. So let me, just tell me the components really quickly. So you got the servers, switches, just step me through them really fast. Yeah. So, so a customer gets to configure the rack any way they want. We'll build them in Factory Express. We actually do in-rack UPS, which is yeah. significantly cheaper than facility level UPS. How much power is available in that UPS? Um, these UPSs right here, there's two of them at 12 kilowatts apiece. At how much runtime? Uh, we, we get about four minutes of runtime at about two to three years. So the idea is to basically flip to generators. You've got plenty of time for these things to go over to generators if you have an issue. That is the expectation. Okay, so then we've got power distribution and then you've got, give me the, uh, the air conditioner. So, so just like a, a contained aisle in a data center, the whole key is to take the hot air the servers are generating and as efficiently as possible suck that hot air through the cooling coil. Yeah. Well, you don't see the cooling coil in here because the fans are in front of them. That's where the fans want to be. You hear people talking about fanless servers, but the reality is I want to do the thing that's the lowest capex sure. and the most energy efficient. So anything I can do to pull the hot air yep. through the coil so that I can drop it down to the cool temperatures or even warm temperatures the servers need yep. in order to be any energy efficient is the right thing. Okay. Access doors on both ends, uh, uh, making sure that of course you've got your uh, required uh, uh, clearance and the fact that it's actually a, uh, a piece of information technology equipment. So this is this is UL certified and CE Mark, right? That's correct. CE Mark, so it will work anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Okay. So and I, this is interesting because you've got enough room here to basically do a lot. Yeah. A lot of the containers get pretty packed up. We 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 tried to make it operationally for customers just like a data center, so they sure. didn't have to make trade-offs. Yep. The end piece of it that's new in our third generation design is our touchscreen environmental control system. So today it actually talks about the water temperature and pressure, 
Uh, you see the uh, hot out, cold out temperature, yep. talks about fan speeds, humidity, status of the systems. Yep. As we move forward, we integrate a lot of the server technology features into here. They work together and ultimately go upstream to the 1600 amp breakers at the facility, mm -hmm. to the chillers, to who knows, outdoor air cooling. Cool. All of this can be optimized together now that's yeah. an end-to-end -end converged solution. Excellent, so let's talk about power distribution. So. You should really uh, recognize our power distribution. Yeah. Uh, this is the uh, Universal Electric Starline. Starline bus. So this is 225 amp, uh, three phase? Uh, 225 amp, three phase. Uh, you can see the red connector that uh, we've now certified in the U.S. Again, yeah. this whole thing is a piece of information yeah. technology equipment. You can see they actually stagger. So actually, in the space where people used to do a 400 amp bus, yeah. we actually have two. 225 amp buses, That's one great. that gives us more power, yeah. and it actually gives us the ability to actually have two fault domains in every rack that are concurrently maintainable and fault tolerant. Cool. So, so one thing to, to notice here, it's really tight, but apparently the, bend, the turn radius is designed perfectly that you can actually service these cans. So the one that's inside, you can take out. So if you got a breaker trip, you got some issue with whatever, you got to tighten the lug nuts, you can do that, you can service all of this. One of the big secrets about going away from a shipping container is that that corrugation made everything tight because one of them was I had a corrugation to watch out for for those. Right, right. Now that I'm not a shipping container, I could push that back, I could push my servers back, gave me more room in the cold aisle. And you, and have, it, an, and you have enough airflow to manage 25 kilowatts a cabinet. I have enough airflow to manage 30 kilowatts or 34 kilowatts in any one cabinet, but on average 25 kilowatts across the whole container so to get to 600 kilowatts total. Just 25 kilowatts cabinet? Isn't that enough? Jeez, wait, come on. <laughs> well, let's look in the back here. Power distribution and uh, management, right? So, so these are, are intelligent. Um, so, no. we, so, so many of our customers choose the option where we have two 17 kilowatt yeah. uh, rotatable hinge switchable intelligent PDUs yeah. in this configuration because the server actually has a lot of the switching in it uh -huh. and actually has three power supplies talking to eight servers. Yeah. We actually use the server to perform the switching of the power supply that you would normally expect when you actually have an intelligent PDU. Okay, okay. And then uh, this unit, is doing what? Um, so the, uh, the, the SL Advanced Power Manager actually takes two features. One, it actually allows us to control the power supplies right. like a PDU and measure them and actually read the server's baseboard motherboard controller to right. feed the information back. So you get out of band and power and all that all together in one total solution. Cool. Let's go take a look at a fully loaded container, okay? Sure. So one of the big things about having containers at a facility is I get to test here before it leaves, all the servers running, and customers can actually look at their loads in here. So let's go look inside and uh, see what a lights out data center looks like. All right. So, close that, we don't want to waste anything. So imagine you're in front of 600 kilowatts okay. in a contained system. Yeah. Think about what it would sound like and feel like in a traditional data center, yeah. and imagine how much energy it would have taken to, pro to, to produce that level of cooling. Yeah. So now, because I'm so closely coupled here, uh -huh. that I can, actually t I can actually get all 2,000 servers yeah. running at 500 or 600 kilowatts that can stay cool. Yeah. I'm testing it while I'm doing this. I'm matching my server fan speed to my overhead fan speed to my chiller temperature to always optimize for energy efficiency. So right now you've got how many servers in this config? Uh, about 2,000 servers in this configuration. All right, so only 2,000 servers. And, <laughs> but you can go to how many with blades? We actually have configurations as high as 3,500 servers in a single pod. Right, and the overall capacity of the container? Overall capacity is 1,100 U, 600 kilowatts. 600 kilowatts of IT load. 600 kilowatts of IT load, of, that's based on the around. cooling, yeah. Okay, great. And each of these are individual, so there's two servers per slot, and everything is ratted, or uh, yeah. cabled that way. 96 servers per rack. Yeah. How, how tall is this? Uh, so it's a 50U rack integrated into yeah. a 12U rack okay. so that I actually get 62U, which allows me to get rid yeah. of the facility level UPS. Okay. So, and this one's running right now, right? Yeah, this, this, this one's running 
one of our test loads, but we expect to turn it on for the customer so that they can validate it, put their load on it before it actually ships out. So yep. we'll be sitting here and tomorrow we'll come in and instead of running at 250 kilowatts, it'll be running at 500 kilowatts because the customer will be running it, yep. which will actually make me a data center operator now. So let's talk a little bit about this. Um, uh, we, are, we are inside of a modular data center. It's generation three. And so basically, Wade, you've been spending a lot of time with your team coming up with solutions that will make it simple and efficient to deploy lots of compute at scale rapidly. Correct? That is correct. Uh, efficiency of supply chain, yep. efficiency of, of capital, efficiency yep. of time, and of course, efficiency energy. And so the key here is that the, the industry is changing. It's no longer about building solid, big brick and mortar buildings. There are components that are going to come out here to say, I'm going to snap in two and a half megawatts of IT capacity in a matter of months. And I can do it at whatever tier level. Yep. I can do it whatever climate I want, especially as people start talking about air cooling. Yep. We actually have the vehicle to deliver that, no pun intended. There you go. <laughs> da -da -da -da. And with that, thanks for watching another episode of Data Center Pulse on the road.